Hey guys, back here with another for loop video, and I've actually done something kind of interesting here. So what I've done is I've created one for loop with the variable i that ranges from 1 to 3. But then inside that for loop, I have another for loop, this time using the variable j, which also ranges from 1 to 3. And then inside this inner for loop, I tell it to display what i is equal to times what j is equal to. And so you'll notice this is indented one more than the for loop it belongs to, and this one belongs to the inner one, so we know that this display command is part of this for loop, and then both for loops are ended by end. So this is kind of a tricky thing, but this is an important programming concept. These for loops are called nested for loops. This one is inside this for loop, so it's nested. So now let's try and think about how this is actually going to print out when we run the program. So on the first iteration of four, i is equal to 1. So we know i is equal to 1, right? And then we get into the second for loop. And now we say j is equal to 1. But remember, when you do a for loop, it gets stuck in that for loop till it finishes going. So what this is going to do is it's going to say i is equal to 1, and then it's going to go j is equal to 1 through 3. So this is going to do 1 times 1, then it's going to do 1 times 2, then it's going to do 1 times 3. And then this for loop will be done. And then I'll cycle all the way back up to the top again. And so now i is going to cycle up to be 2. So now it's going to do 2 and then 2 to 1 through 3. So what it's going to do is 2 times 1. Then it's going to do 2 times 2. Then it's going to do 2 times 3. And then this inner loop for, uh, for loop finishes. Then we go all the way back to the top again. And now i becomes equal to 3. So then it's going to do 3 through 1 through 3. So I'm just going to do... 3 times 1, 3 times 2, and then 3 times 3. And then finally, we've completed both for loops, right? This one is cycled all the way through 1 through 3, and this one's done 1 through 3 a total of 3 times. So let's print it out just to verify it. So as you can see, it does 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3. Then i cycles up to be 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and then i cycles again to 3 times 1, 3 times 2, and then 3 times 3. And so these nested for loops are actually very, very powerful. And one example of how powerful they are is you can actually iterate through the elements of um, a matrix. So let's say you want to go through the ith, jth element of a matrix. Well, now you can do two inner for loops. And that'll get you through each element of that for uh, of that matrix. So maybe let's create a random matrix that's three by three. So I'm gonna say matrix is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So this is a three by three matrix. And so what we can do is we can actually access the ith jth element of that matrix by doing this. We can say matrix of i comma j. So what's this going to do on the first round? It's going to say i is equal to 1, and then on the first round j is equal to 1, right? So it's going to take the 1, 1 position of this matrix up here, so that's going to be 1. And then it's going to take the 1, and then this one's now 2, so it's going to take the 1, 2 position, right? So 2. Then it's going to take the 1, 3 position. And then i cycles up to be 2, so then it's going to do 2, 1, and then 2, 2, and then 2, 3. So anyway, let's print it out just to verify it. So as you can see, it does 1 through 9 like we expected. So these nested for loops are really powerful in MATLAB, and you guys are going to be using them multiple times throughout the semester. Um, so I hope this video helped, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.